Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Cerevo Live Shell X and this is a device that allows you to stream video out to multiple video providers at the same time. So earlier today I was able to broadcast to YouTube Live, Facebook Live and Twitch uh, all at the same time from a single video source. A very flexible device and I actually prefer doing my live streaming through a dedicated box versus a computer because computers can tend to be unpredictable. Uh, these boxes are almost appliances in that they have a single purpose and they uh, usually uh, it's conduct that single purpose quite well and this one certainly will do that and I'll show you some examples as to how you can get it set up and how to use it here in just a second. I do want to mention though in the interest of full disclosure this came in free of charge from Cerevo. However all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a look and see what makes this thing tick. Now they have a couple of different boxes in this live shell line. Uh, this is their top of the line box that costs about $700 so it's not cheap but I think for people that are streaming professionally to a number of providers having that fl flexibility in a box uh, will cost you a lot less than it might to have a PC that could do the same thing. It has built-in scalers on board to get your resolution set to the right uh, settings and I'll explain all that here in a second when we go through the hardware. So I do think it's actually uh, fairly priced for what it is. Uh, they do have some other products in their live show line that cost less. They have less capabilities but if you're looking for something uh, quick and easy in a single box unit they've got some I think that start around two or three hundred bucks also. So you do have some choices there. On the side here, you've got an SD card slot so you can record your uh, stream as it goes out on the box. And I'll explain how that works as well in a second. A very busy uh, OLED display here also, which does make sense once you understand how it all works. Uh, you've got your HDMI input here for getting video into the device. Uh, you have audio input here also for uh, recording audio. So the way this works is that uh, if you don't have audio coming through your HDMI, you can uh, bring in your audio with an analog connection if you need to do that. You have a USB port here and that is used for connecting up wireless sources. You can use a cellular modem or you can use the included Wi-Fi dongle to connect it to a uh, Wi-Fi network. I do recommend though using Ethernet whenever possible when you're streaming, especially when you're going out to multiple providers simultaneously. So that is where uh, that Ethernet cable will be very handy and that's how I recommend doing it. And of course you have your power there. Uh, they have a multiple uh, mounting brackets here so you can mount it on a rack it looks like or uh, you can attach it to a tripod mount as well. So you do have some options maybe to mount it onto a camera or something like that for convenience. There is an onboard battery on this also. I was not able to test that because this pre-release unit that they sent me a while ago, I, I was kind of behind on my reviews here. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be working with the battery, so I was unable to test that, but they do uh, claim about five or six hours of battery life uh, streaming without the power connected. Now, the way this works is that it can send out three streams simultaneously uh, or send out two streams and uh, record onto the card. So you have three things that you can do with the same time, uh, recording in two streams or three streams, but you can't do three streams and record on the device. It also doesn't have an HDMI output, unfortunately, so uh, you can't record uh, somewhere else. You'll need to probably split your signal if you want to record and stream out uh, to all three sources at the same time. You can see here that we're getting a 1080i signal in from my TriCaster right now. It will then scale that video to the desired resolution that you wish to broadcast at. So when I was testing it earlier, I sent 1080p 30 video to YouTube at, uh, two, I think it was two megabits per second. I did Facebook Live at 720p at that same bit rate as well as Twitch at that bit rate. Uh, those two at 720p and Facebook at 1080p. So it was able to de-interlace this and scale it appropriately. Again, all inside the box here. And doing all of that would often kill a uh, pretty decent computer. So it's nice to have uh, an all-purpose box here to do that for us. And it seemed to work uh, pretty well, again, going off that HDMI source that came in through the back. Now the box does support 1080p 60, but it can only support one destination at that frame rate. So you could record or you can stream, but that's it. One or the other, uh, not three, but one. Uh, but you can do three at 1080p at 30 frames per second, so long as you're keeping the total maximum bit rate below 150 megabits per second. Now you configure the live shell through a web-based control panel that you get to uh, by going to shell.cerevo.com. And that to me is the biggest flaw with this device because if Cerevo's server goes down for any reason, you can't connect back to your own box to configure it or uh, get some of the broadcast going. You can do some degree of uh, start and stop here from the device itself with the uh, onboard controls, but all the configuration has to be done through this control panel. And if their server is down, uh, you're out of luck, even though the box might be working. There's no other communication that goes on between the box and Cerevo, but uh, for whatever reason, 
they make you go in through their website to get everything going. I did try to scan the ports on this thing just to find what it might be using to uh, get this control panel going, but I was out of luck. Uh, so that is a big, big gripe of mine on this one. I hope that they uh, come up with some other alternatives. Maybe I'm missing something. So if I did, uh, let me know down in the comments below and I'll do a follow-up. But uh, in my testing, I had to go through their website to get into the box to uh, configure everything to get going. Now you'll see here, I've got three tabs on this one because there are three different uh, things that I can stream to, or uh, in this case, stream to two and record to the third. And uh, these tabs correlate to the front of the device on the screen here. So I have zero, one, and two. Uh, zero is now set to other service on here, which is actually YouTube Live. Uh, Facebook Live is on the second channel that I'm recording on the third channel. Now, YouTube is a tricky uh, beast because there are two different ways that you can get YouTube up and running. One is that you can set up a live streaming event the old way on the way uh, YouTube Live used to work, or uh, now you can just send uh, your data to YouTube streaming servers and it will just begin streaming for you, which uh, is probably the easier way to go. But if you want to do that, you have to set it up as a manual service, which is what I did here. So uh, what you need to do is go over to your uh, YouTube page and go over to the live streaming section where it says stream now. And then there'll be a, a section here, which will give you a server URL and a stream name and key. Uh, you click reveal here and copy and paste that uh, into the control panel over here. So you click on that gear icon and insert that information where it's asking for it. So then that way, whenever you want to go live on YouTube, you can just hit the button and start streaming versus setting up an event and doing all of that stuff. Now you can do the event thing and, and attach that tab to a specific event. But once that stream is over, you have to go in and reconfigure it again. Uh, so it's a little easier here just to uh, set it up as a manual source and go from there. Now, Facebook is a little more complicated. You do have to set up the stream every time you do it. And you have to set up the stream maybe an hour or so before you stream because Facebook expires its uh, keys that it gives you for your live stream. And the way you do it is you go to your Facebook page, you have to go over here to publishing tools and then uh, select video library here on the left hand side of the screen. And then you go over to the live button and then it will give you uh, what you need to paste into the control panel to get all of that working. So similar uh, setup to what you just did on YouTube, but Facebook uh, requires you to set up that stream every time you do it. And you'll have to go in and change those settings every time here in the uh, Cerebo control panel on Facebook Live. So just keep that in mind as you are uh, going about doing your business there. And then I have the third one right now set to recording so that I can record onto the SD card. And they do give you some pretty granular controls on each of the output channels as far as video resolution and bitrate are concerned. So uh, there is a basic mode here on each tab. So what you can do is just uh, do a very basic bitrate setting here if you want to keep it simple uh, with uh, some basic audio controls also. But if you want to get uh, into the weeds a little bit, which you might do, especially if you are into this kind of stuff, uh, you do have those options. So you can go here to your audio mixer and adjust uh, the line in volume versus the HDMI. They also have an audio delay option. So if you are bringing in your audio separately from your video and you're noticing it's out of sync, you can delay the audio uh, so it matches up better with the video as you're uh, doing your thing. And that's built into the box here. So you don't have to uh, have a separate delay box to do that, which was a nice uh, little touch there that they included that. Uh, you have the ability here to adjust your audio settings as far as bit rate and uh, the stereo versus mono kind of stuff. You have video quality settings here too. So you can adjust your bit rate over here. Remember your max is 150 megabits across all three channels, but uh, you can crank it up on any channel you want or uh, crank them all up as long as you're under that hard cap. Your frame rate is set here. Remember 60 frames per second only works uh, with one channel and one channel only, but you can set all three to 30 and get everything out there uh, that way. And you also have the ability here to go into H.265 mode if your server that you're connecting to supports that. Uh, and H.265 is a more efficient compression algorithm, which will give you better video quality with less bandwidth. So if you are having uh, issues and you want to get a better quality image out and your server supports H.265, uh, select it because there is an encoder built into the box to let you do that, which I thought was also very nice there. So lots of settings to uh, set and each channel can be set individually uh, down there. So you can scale three different uh, videos going out the door to each of those sources. So pretty cool that all this happens inside this box here and it doesn't even heat up all that much when it's doing it.
And one of the things that they added to this, which is really useful, is the ability to insert titling onto your stream. So if you're using a Blackmagic ATEM or a Cerebo's Live Wedge switcher, those switchers are very useful for getting multiple cameras in, but they don't make titling all that easy. Uh, this might actually help you out with that because it adds a titling feature that's really useful. So what I'm doing right now is recording uh, off of my second camera. And what I'm going to do now is uh, overlay some titling. And uh, what I've got here are two titles loaded up. Uh, these are PNG files files that have transparency in them. So I'm going to click on one of them here and click on insert. And you can see now I've got live and Bob Smith's name up there. I'll click on insert here and now my recording will have that uh, overlaid on top of it as uh, it is going on. So if I wanted to have uh, Bob's caption on there, I can do that. And then I could switch to this other one that I've already preloaded as well. Uh, click insert and then uh, that one will insert itself over the recording. And then I can of course always uh, remove it if I want. So you can load up a bunch of these things. If you want to title your uh, talent as they're talking without having to buy an extra device, uh, this will do it on the outbound stream and on the recording, which I found to be incredibly useful. And the last thing is just the quality of the output streams. I found it to be pretty good. Now, um, I'm limited here just because I don't have a lot of upstream bandwidth, so I did some pretty low bandwidth streams up to those three services simultaneously, but it was able to uh, maintain a steady connection on all three. It had a bunch of viewers uh, tuning in at the time that I did my streams to make sure it was all working across those services, and it did. Uh, each one, of course, has different levels of delay and how long it gets to out, out to the viewers and whatnot, but I was able to just hit a couple of buttons and get uh, Twitch, YouTube Live, and Facebook Live all working at the same time. I'll put links to all of those down below. Uh, the video quality improves the more bandwidth you can throw at it, so if I was doing more than uh, two megabits per second, you would see better quality, but uh, given I was trying to fit all three into an upstream bandwidth of about 10 megabits or so, I was not able to get the best possible quality, but I'll also upload the uh, 13 megabit bit version of the video that I recorded onto the card uh, to the extras channel so you can get a feel for that. So links to all the sample footage will be down below uh, in the video description so you have some idea as to how all of this works in practice. But I did find that it did work as advertised and it was able to uh, sustain a stream to multiple sources uh, without any issues for well over an hour and it seems like it would keep going after that. So I had a very good experience with this with the latest firmware that I loaded up this morning when I tested it. So uh, good stuff from Cerevo here. If you're looking for a streaming box, this might be worth looking at. Uh, again, it's $700, which is on the pricier side of things, but I think for a streaming box, uh, especially for what it can do, uh, it's not an unreasonable price to pay. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.